What up, peeps? It's Tony Baker here for another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Black Panther and I'm fresh out of the movie theater. Like literally fresh out. Like 30 minutes ago, I was in the movie theater. Literally. You see the shirt, you automatically gonna think, oh, he's biased. Well, maybe, but maybe not though. I'm a, integrity is key. If you're not familiar with the character, man, Black Panther is the king of an African nation called Wakanda, which is one of the wealthiest countries in the world of Marvel. Uh, they're wealthy because they have access to vibranium, which is a super rare, super powerful mineral that crash landed in Africa years ago, and only they have access to it. And so they just accumulated this wealth under wraps, and they take pride in the secrecy of the whole, the whole country. Nobody knows about it. To the outside world, they think it's a third world country. Little do they know what's really going on. And if you saw Captain America Civil War, that's when Black Panther made his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe when he was there with his father and his father ended up getting killed. And so Black Panther was on the scene to try to take down the Winter Soldier because he blamed him for his father's death. He got his own movie and it's about time. They've been trying to do the Black Panther movie for mad long. Wesley Snipes tried to get it kicked up in the 90s, but um, the studio ended up, they kept taking all day and uh, they approached Wesley Snipes to do Blade. He was like, all right, since y'all taking all day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here and do Blade. You see how Blade turned out. Blade was dope. Blade 2 was dope as well. Blade 3, we'll talk about that later. Blade was low key the first Marvel comic book movie that did well. And he gave the company confidence to be like, yo, let's start making these movies. So a lot of people don't get Blade, it's just do. Marvel is here now because of Blade. Marvel in the movie sense, you know what I'm saying? I just want to give a shout out to Blade. The big deal about this movie is it's a black superhero. That's a big deal. Like leading the film. Yeah, we in other films, we usually side pieces. This time we the main attraction, so it's a big deal. Chadwick Boseman plays Black Panther. Um, I don't know who his agent is. I'm gonna say this again. When I did the Marshall review, I don't know who his agent is, but he is killing these these characters, like the, the characters he's played, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, James Brown, now T'Challa, the first black superhero that Marvel Comics ever created. Man, whoever his agent is, if you're watching, can you can you take me on as a client, please? I can play, I can play Moses, I can play Hannibal Barker, just you know. I'm sure I look like somebody from history. Maybe I can play, uh, what's his name from uh, God of War? Kronos. He's bald with a little chin hair, right? Just paint me white. We got a star-studded Academy Award winning cast, like nominees, Angela Bassett is in that joint, Forrest Whitaker's in that joint. Uh, Daniel, I don't know how to say his last name, who's nominated right now for Best Actor for Get Out is in that joint. Uh, we got the girl from The Walking Dead, Deny. I don't know her last name. I don't want to butcher it, so I'm gonna just say her first name. Um, we got Letitia Wright, who I know from Black Mirror, and um, Michael B. Jordan plays the villain. We also got Andy Serkis in that joint as another villain. Usually when Marvel uses more than one villain, it usually backfires. I don't know, it doesn't always work, but this time it works because we got a secondary villain and like a main villain. And I was worried about Michael B. Jordan as the villain in this, based on the trailer. I wasn't sold on him, but when I watched it, I was completely sold because I felt the villain, like in a sense. Like, you know, I felt where he came from. I was like, okay, all right. And when you got a villain like that, there's more weight to it. You feel the gravity of him. He's not just out here just trying to steal the water supply or get a billion dollars transferred to his bank account. Like it was more to it than that. So you kinda, you kinda sympathetic to him in a sense, but then you know, they always go too far and you're like, oh, okay. He did a great job in this movie. And I feel like every superhero movie, every movie period has to have a good villain. If you don't have a good villain, that means everybody else has to carry the load. And so when you got a good villain and a good hero, you're like, ah, oh, yes, perfect. The women in this movie were clutch. It was a very strong female presence all throughout this movie. They, they weren't just damsels in distress. They weren't just love interests. They had meat to them, like all of them. And I thought that was really dope. I think it's a great visual for women just to see, little girls to see these type of women out here being, you know, wizards in the, in the lab, like warriors. 
I thought it was just a dope visual to see, and uh, it was refreshing. And the world of Wakanda that they set up, man, is is super dope. Like I felt like I was somewhere else. I don't feel that a lot with Marvel comic movies. Uh, usually I feel like, oh, okay, we just here. I want to see the heroes in action. But this time I feel like I went somewhere. Like how I feel when I watch Harry Potter, when I watch Lord of the Rings, I feel like, man, I feel like I'm in this world. That's why I like, I liked it when Harry Potter movies were coming out every year because I felt like I was going to Hogwarts. Like I couldn't wait for him to go. And the director did a good job, man. Ryan Coogler, dude from the Bay Area, Oakland. Even when he talks, you hear his Oakland accent. He did a great job, man. And to take on a movie, a $200 million movie, your director, your first movie, Fruitvale Station, budget was super low, but it got critical buzz. Creed was super dope. And now he has Black Panther. He's undefeated. He's 3-0 on these directorial streets. And he's a young dude. He's a young dude cranking out these joints, man. Because at first, they were looking at F, F. Gary Gray, the director. Uh, he did like Set It Off and uh, the last Fast and Furious movie. He's got a good resume. He did Straight Outta Compton. And uh, he did the Waterfalls video by TLC. Not a lot of people know that. They were also in talks with Ava DuVernay, who directed uh, Selma in the documentary uh, The 13th, which is a dope documentary. Uh, she was in talks to direct too, but she went and did A Wrinkle in Time. So Ryan Coogler did an amazing job, man. My only, my only complaints about the movie, the fight choreography, and some of the special effects. That's my only issue. Character-wise, it was great. Acting-wise, it was outstanding. But yeah, that was my only like nitpick. Like, ah, oh, some of the fight scenes was just, mm. They were focused so much on character and stuff like that, they probably didn't have a lot of time to get the fight choreography down. So maybe in the next one, they can focus on that a little bit more, not rely on CGI and shaky camera movements. That's my only complaint, really, about the whole joint. The theater was outstanding. Like, the energy in there, they were hype. Theater was packed. It was IMAX. They were hype. I like hype theater environments. Where they clapping and excited to be there. I like that, you know what I'm saying? They were, woo, oh, yeah, woo. I like that. Some people like to go with a stiff crowd. I like a crowd that's energetic. I'm a comedian, man. I need that energy. Takeaways. Um, let's put more women in these movies, man. I mean, it's women in every movie, but you know what I mean. And not like, you know, ultra tough, undefeated women, like over the top, overdoing it women. Like women can still be women and still do all this other stuff at the same time. Let's get more of that going. Um, another takeaway, stop taking the mask off of these superheroes. Stop taking the mask off for dramatic effect. I complained about this with Star Wars. The same thing happened in Black Panther. He took his mask off every two seconds. Every time he fell back, oh, the mask got to come off real quick so you can see my face. We don't need to see it. We know what's going on. We know it's you. We know the emotions are running hot underneath the mask. We don't need to see your face every move you make. Keep the mask on. Anyway, y'all want to know the Smooth Jazz Review of Black Panther. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. Y'all hear that squeak back? Yeah. I'm giving Black Panther... I'm gonna give it four and a half saxophones out of five. <laughs> and if I had a mask on, I would keep it on the whole review. Ooh. All right, peace. That's my review of Black Panther. Let me know what you thought about Black Panther in the comment section below. Uh, also, let me know what you thought about Blade, too. Just throw that in there as well. Um, if you like Black Panther, I would recommend checking out, if you like black superheroes, check out uh, Blade 1 and 2, of course. You can skip the third one. The third one was rushed. Wesley Snipes didn't want to be there. Ryan Reynolds was funny, but other than that, um, check out Meteor Man with Robert Townsend. Check out Blank Man with Damon Wayans. And uh, check out Black Lightning on the CW. I watched that, uh, the first episode, it wasn't bad. TV, TV dramas can be corny, and it is corny, but it still wasn't too bad, anyway. But let me know, man, let me know, and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as usual, we out here.